Hello there, Alan speaking here, and this is my Tomb Raider 3 random stories for the PlayStation 1. Firstly, let's go to Laura's home once again. This happens to be my most favourite Tomb Raider game out of the series. I mean, on the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2 and PS3, all together, this, this is my favourite. And I've recently played through it again. Um, as soon as you start, you know, the lighting effects, it was completely new. It felt so fresh. It didn't felt reused. It didn't feel reused like the others. I just thought it was great. You get the flares here. I thought there was a shotgun in there at first, like in Tomb Raider 2. You can instantly see the lighting effects. You know, everything's more dramatic. You know, than what it looked like before. New features include the quad bike. And forgive me for this run, which is actually terrible, as I haven't done it for a long time, and I just did it for basis of the video, really. So I get really bad time on it. I think it's because I took a wrong turn and I went straight up there thinking there was a way you could go up there. I think there is, but I just didn't try hard enough. I've done a better time than this before. They've also included the sprint. And you can roll at the end. And you can also crouch and crawl. And they've added guns in the home, so poor Winston, you can finally shoot him so tempting. Okay, enough of that. I'll go on one more. And the start, uh, the first level, which is India, I mean, what a perfect start, a slope going all the way down. I mean, the spikes there. I actually landed on the spikes at the bottom the first time I tried this level. It made me jump. And you get to the bottom to find that there's some little monkey down there. And probably the first thing you'll do is shoot at it, because you see it grab something. I think I remember correctly, I thought it was a key. So I ended up shooting at it. Only to find out that they become a pest later on in the level, because you have to shoot the rest of them. And it drops it around the corner anyway. And then later on, you get different locations around the world. First being Nevada, well, I chose Nevada first, which was lucky because you, know, you lose your weapons later on in the game and after you've collected loads of stuff throughout the levels it was terrible. You've got to release the prisoners to beat this guard up because you've got no weapons at this point. I remember getting really angry not knowing what to do at first. I got out of the cell but I just didn't know what to do. I loved it when he got his comeuppance. Yeah. him up. And then on to the South Pacific Islands, which took me ages to complete. I mean, they were baffling for me. They took me so long. And um, there were some little minor Easter eggs, you know, here and there. This one being one of them, which was you know, Survivor, the Australian Survivor. And, um, you know, if you run around this little hut, you'll hear him, you know, you'll hear him say, you know, you hear him call you or say a name. It actually terrified me when I first heard it as my window was open. And now we're on to London, which is by far my favourite level. And they finally added it to Tomb Raider games. I mean, you can see St Paul's Cathedral, everything about it. Nice setting, lighting, the rain, you know, the moon in the background that you see as I turn around here. Everything about it was great, I loved it. It was scary, it was the scariest levels on Tomb Raider for me. I mean, I found a few Tomb Raider scary, but this by far was the most scariest for me. I remember just seeing an, an old abandoned tube station scared me straight away and then knowing that I might have to run down the tunnels that was terrifying thinking there was going to be a train down here because of the sound effects and the setting and I was right there was a train just made it and it's instant death once it hits you obviously
Another minor thing that terrified me on this level when I was playing through it is something small, but it scared the hell out of me as I was a kid. I was playing this at night. I did not expect this. That dog. That scared the hell out of me, that did. And all the guns are back, this time better lighting, better sound effects. You see the shells? I love that they added that to this, the detail of it. Shotgun sounds great. I thought they ruined the grenade launcher though. I thought it was better in Tomb Raider 2 as an instant explosion, instant hit. But I guess the, the rocket launcher makes up for that. And last but not least, my favourite, the Desert Eagle, and I think it's everyone's favourite. Sounds good too. And that all tricks back again with the Uzis. Hold down action when you're shooting. And then select the pistols. And that reload sound again. And also if you notice on the side of the handgun, if you if you look at them both throughout the levels, you'll notice that you know once it switches to Antarctica, the left handgun actually has a problem with it. You see that there? The handle the handle grip is where the muzzle is. I don't know if anyone ever noticed that. Hmm. Finally, I wonder if I can actually go outside here. There's a switch. Further it does that mean I get to go around London finally once and for all? Is it finally here? I can't believe it, it's finally here! What the f-